Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to Dumb SEO Questions, episode 433. Each week uh, we meet here to uh, review the questions and uh, answers uh, given on the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. With us tonight, uh, we have uh, David Roseanne. David is a, a leading internet marketer. He's based in Sussex, in the sunny south of the UK. And Masataki Wasa is webmaster of wasaweb.net. Uh, he uh, can be found at wasaweb.net. David can be found at davidrosanne.com. Masataki resides in Wimbledon um, in the uh, wilds of London. All right, let's um, have a look at our first question. I'm probably doing something wrong here already. Um, yeah, I have, done, have made a mistake, haven't I? Let me just see. There we are. So, what do I, how do I recover from this, David? Um, I don't know. Uh, Windows? Uh, um, this one, it's, it's, it's from Stacey Colthup. It's, it's number one on our run list. It's titled, uh, Keywords in Your Meta Descriptions Won't Affect Your uh, Ranking. Um, and Stacey went on to say, I was just told that having your keywords in your meta descriptions won't affect your ranking, so don't bother putting them in. Uh, is that right? Uh, not all of it is right. Um, having keywords in your meta descriptions won't affect your ranking. True. Don't bother putting them in. Probably not true. Um, it's a good idea to put a meta description um, in your post, um, but they are optional, I guess. Um, if you don't put your own meta description in, Google will do it for you. Um, if you do put a meta description in, sometimes Google um, will still put it in for you. Uh, but if you write um, a message description, then at least you've got a chance of getting the, the message that you want over rather than the one that Google has cobbled together from looking at your your page. Um, so um, the the keywords, um, yes, message descriptions don't affect um, uh, ranking. So, um, but if you've written your, your con content correctly, your keywords will naturally occur. Um, in that in that copy um so if you're um as as, uh, as tim's not here um i'm gonna revive pink fluffy elephants if you're writing about pink fluffy elephants and that's one of your keywords which um you should uh, that should happen if if you're um if you're writing about pink fluffy elephants that's naturally one of your keywords so um so it's likely that when you write your message description, pink fluffy elephants will occur in in those in your 155 characters or thereabouts that uh, uh, that make up a um, a message description. So I think that's covered it all, and I hope I've covered it in a way that is um, it's understandable. Uh, otherwise, I'm sure someone else will tell me. Mm-hmm. Um, Massa, do you, you want to add anything to da David's uh, um, explanation? No, I think David's covered it well. Excellent. Uh, and um, I, I can't move on, though, but without thanking people like uh, Christine Hansen, uh, who uh, I see answered uh, this um, on, on, on the uh, group. Um, they make 
yeah, people like Pauline, there's so many, uh, sorry, Christine, I should say, um, make um, damage here questions as a valuable uh, resource. All right, let's move on to the next. And uh, this one from Sadat Rayid Odawa. How can I make new blog posts index faster? Um, so that said, hey, community, how can I make new blog posts indexed faster? Does sharing them on social media help them to be uh, indexed faster? Michael Martin has said, not likely to have a profound effect on indexing. The search engines uh, index content at a pace reflecting the value they place in that content. It's hardly worth saying anything, is it? That's that that says it, does it not? Um, yes, we cannot persuade um, Google or the search engines to to do this in the moment. Moment, um, if we um, if we give them good, interesting, and unique content over time, then generally. Um, Google and the search engines will come along and index our, our new content more quickly with more enthusiasm because we're giving them damn good content. Um, if it's a bit boring and like the rest of the, the internet, then uh, they'll not bother. Yeah, uh, yeah I think um, there, there would be a difference between discovery and indexing and if um, the question is about discovery then I think most blogs have a feed and Google is pretty good at visiting those so I think most blogging platforms will, will come with a feed and that means that discovery is pretty um, easy and early but the issue as David said just now, and others in the thread answered, um, it really depends on the quality and whether the content is worthwhile indexing for Google. So there isn't, in a sense, a simple answer to that question. Thank you, Mr. Taki. Thank you, David. Okay, let's call that a wrap. And uh, number three on our run list. It's from El Bakito. Um, it's titled, What Can I Use as a Meta Description? Um, El Bakito went on to ask, I wanted to gain a visitor's interest and time uh, through the first line of the content. Can I use that uh, first line as a meta description as it's relevant? Uh, explains the uh, content within the healthy character count and has the primary keyword. So basically, the question I'm asking, will there be any duplication issues? Um, no, this is this is really good. Um, this is really good practice, by the way. Um, if you um, if you're writing a good introduction, um, whether it's a um, whether it's part of the format of your uh, your article, your page, or, or whether it's just the introduction, um, it should it should do this uh, this this thing here that you say is it's relevant. Explain the content uh, within the healthy character count that has primary keyword. It, it should act as a hook. That's what it should do. It should get people. Whatever whatever figure it is, I can't remember offhand. Say it's ninety percent of people don't get beyond the, uh, the 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 headline. Well, you want to try and get more than ten percent into the body copy and get them reading it. That's that's what that's one of the functions of your your introduction. It's one of the prime um, functions of your of your introduction, um, which surprisingly enough is very similar to the. Um, the functions of um, 
of a meta description. You're trying to get people into your article by clicking on the um, on, on the uh, result, the search result. Um, so yes, what you're doing in terms of um, of content um, is is good, um, and what you're describing is what I quite often do myself, which is to take the first paragraph of my uh, of what I've written and paste it into uh, paste it into the message description and then edit it um, because quite often my um, my first paragraph is longer than the message description. Um, so um, yes, um, do this. Um, it's good practice. Uh, there won't be any duplicate content issues that I know of. Thank you, David. Any more? Okay, let's go to number four on our run list. Um, let me see. Uh, there we are. Number four is from Nick Hughes. Uh, this is a question about web cache and search engine optimization. Nick said, um, you can see this link displays the, the content in text only view in a correct way. But what if the web cache displays the text half on the page and half off the page uh, as it as in is not centered it's being cut off from view i was informed in another group that it is nothing to worry about um and uh, there is no evidence that this is an issue etc etc i believe it is and I'm wondering uh, uh, your thoughts thank you Oh, um, this, this is a strange one, and I'm not sure I'm equipped to answer answer it um, properly. Um, so why the hell have I jumped in? Um, <laughs> I I see this as, as something I did like years ago, and I don't do it anymore. And I'm just wondering why I don't. Um, um, what Richard says um, is kind of... Uh, what I use, um, I quite often look into the mobile friendliness of a um, of a page. Um, what um, I think what what web cache does is it tells you what Google can can see when it spiders your page. So it gives you uh, a, a guide as to whether all of your content is accessible by Google. Um, but it doesn't have a it doesn't have a um, a formatting um, part to it, so um, of course it will turn up odd, or it's likely to turn up odd because you stripped out all the formatting. Um, so I guess the I guess the answer is if it if the if, if this view is showing all your content, uh, then great. Um, but I'm willing to be um, put right by someone who really knows what they're talking about rather than picking through um, what I've done over the years and tools I've used. Yeah, well, I didn't know anything, but I had I just looked at the, um, the page in question in a text only view and there's nothing wrong with it. Um, in fact, I think the page rendered reasonably well because that because it's well structured it's reasonably well structured so it's not as though it's all in one block of text for instance so you know if you have headings if you have proper paragraphs and so on and so forth then those will come out those will be rendered it may not be the text may not be centered but it's visible so to be honest i didn't really see any issues i'm not you know I don't think there's anything for Nick to worry about, and indeed, I think it's. I think the um, the text-only version looks pretty good to me. Yeah, um, Masataki and David, um, Richard and Michael Martinez. Uh, 
uh, happy. Um, yeah, I, I think you could safely say that there's no need to get hung up on uh, what um, is, is seen by uh, um, Googlebot users. Um, what, what is that tool that um, uh, Google, Googlebot does use um, to, to create? Um, the what they put in from a, a, a cache record. You don't, you don't, not, not, I can't remember. Terrible to be getting old. It, it, it's a public available, publicly available tool. Um, I'm going to see what Michael Martin is that uh, uses the cache for just one moment. He said, I use the case to determine if the search engine is seeing everything you wanted to see. Well, it's, that's it. Um, they're providing you with information about what they can extract from the page without the intended formatting. So if nothing you want indexed is missing from the text only cache, then that's really all you need to know. Yeah. All right. I think we can wrap this one. And we're looking at number five on our run list from Juan Dallas A. Jr. Um, it's a question titled, which one would have the best search engine optimization score? Uh, he said, let's say I want to buy the domain blah, blah, dot com, but that uh, is unavailable. Should I buy instead blah 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 dot com or blah 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 dot net or blah 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 or blah blah uh, dot um, org? Um, I'm sorry, blah blah not, dot net or blah blah dot org. Which one would have the best click through rate and um, SEO score? Well, that, that, that's the thing. Um, why would um, uh, any any domain affect the um, click through rate. Are, are we um, are we getting into exact ma uh, match domain um, area here? Again, I wonder. Um, or is this is blah blah a uh, um, a brand? Because if it's if we're getting into exact match domain um, area, we're definitely wasting our time. And of course, um, the the domain doesn't affect um, SEO score, whatever that is, and um, and likely click through rate. Um, so, whichever way you look at it, um, find a find a domain that fits what you want to do, fits your business, uh, fits your marketing needs. Um, as Alan John says, I guess there might be some evidence that people might trust blah, 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 dot com more than, um, what did someone say, blah, 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 dot ninja. Um, but that's probably more to do with the nature of having dot ninja. Um, if you were a um, if you were a plumber and it and there was blah 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 dot plumber available um, that would fit very nicely um, probably just as well as blah 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 dot com so it's not a um, it, it, it's it, it's it's a it's a business question because there isn't anything here that affects SEO thank you David Okay, well, I think when I click this, we're going to see that it is, thank you for watching time. Okay, we've done it again for yet another week. We've answered all the questions um, asked on the uh, uh, Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. Well, we haven't actually answered, we've reviewed the answers that given. We'll be back at the same time next week uh, to do this uh, all again. Um, but before I go, I, we must thank people like um, uh, 
interesting and um, um, Stockbridge and Truslow. Um, goodness me, where does my memory go? Um, Michael Martinez and I'm such an idiot. I, I think it's time for me. To I, stop I, I think your I think your brain is still in bed, Jim, and so That's it should a, be at this right. hour. It is, it is. is two a.m. Australian time, after all. Yeah. Um, but um, I should be able to do better than that. Um, or maybe I could um, get some um, little prompts. I might, I might, I might write write myself out some some prompts, and I'll just read the prompts. Ah, uh, yes, post-it notes. Mm. Yes, very high-tech they are. Okay. All right, anyway, we'd like to see you next week. Um, so um, let's, let's keep watching the, the dumb SEO questions Facebook group. Um, yeah, that'll do me. There's nothing else to say. I'll close this meeting. Okay.